What's happening, everyone? Happy Monday. Happy New Year. Welcome to the show. I'm Ed Troxel, your host and the guy who makes business and tech stupid easy for you. I'm your creative uh, concierge, and I wanted to kick off today's show a little bit different. You'll notice that if you've been following me, that I have uh, some branding, different branding going on here. There's the logo up in the corner here instead of down below where it normally is. We are testing out BeLive.tv uh, because I've been using Facebook Creator, which has been awesome and it's been a great app to use. However, I have guests coming on next week or this week. It's already 2018. I have guests starting tomorrow, which we'll talk about towards the end of the show. Um, and I want to make sure that everything's working. And since Facebook Creator app is still having some glitches for being able to bring on guests, I'm uh, testing out Be Live TV because I don't want you guys to uh, miss anything that we have to offer. So definitely stay tuned till the end and make sure that you share the broadcast, but also keep up with all the events, which I'll show you how to do here in a second. Well, maybe a couple minutes. Um, so if this is your first time joining, feel free to uh, jump into the comments and say hello, engage with each other. Even if you're watching the replay, that's okay. Um, always feel free to give feedback. This is our first official day as Ed Talk TV. And basically this is just a talk show that we will be doing Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You'll be able to uh, engage in the comments. I'll come on, bring on the topic, uh, hopefully have a guest for you. My goal is to have a guest every day of the week. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest, you can request to be a guest over on checkwithed.com. Just click on Facebook Live in the menu options. Um, so that's how you can be on the show and share your expertise, grow your online relationships, because that's what we're all about, engaging with each other and connecting teamwork equals success. So that's a little bit about the show. Now, before we jump into today's content, which is going to be about email marketing, uh, you know, I'm not going to get too much into the numbers, but I'm going to talk about email um, open rate versus uh, Facebook Messenger open rates and a little bit of the difference there as it ties into uh, user uh, experience, the user experience. So we'll talk about that. We won't go so much into like the bots and things like that um, because I'll be honest, I'm not into uh, Facebook bots. I don't know that much about them because I'm not in that uh, area yet. So we will pass on that part, but I want to talk about user experience and kind of plant the seed for um, the numbers there that we're going to go over. But first, before we do that, uh, let's, let's start with a little new year ordering system. So have you ever thought about going, when you go out to a restaurant, let's say, uh, a, a burger joint. Have you ever thought about just being able to walk up and order something without actually saying what you want? Well, there is a new way to do that. And you're able to actually do that over at Cali Burger. So let me switch over my screen here and show you that now over at Cali Burger, you can actually order using your face. And here's just a little sample of what it looks like for that. Maybe it's going to remember for you. Now, it's very interesting, if you think about it, they have this machine that now allows you to just create your order and then have a facial expression. And then anytime you want to reorder, you just go up to the machine and you stand there and you give that expression. Now, I don't know about you, but for that, there, there's, there's pluses and minuses for that, right? It's gonna come down to what, where's the user experience on that? So part of the, the problem we'll, we'll say for this is that uh, the problem it solves is not having to wait in line and order and like go over every single detail, you know, no lettuce or pickles or onions on my burger. I just want like cheese, burger, and bun, that's it. 
Um, so that that's a problem that they're solving. So I don't have to always repeat myself to the person taking my order. Now, the downside though, and the kind of weird spot is, is that you're now working directly with a machine and you're cutting down that user uh, engagement, that user experience, right? So it's hard to call if this is a good or not uh, option. Uh, that didn't really make sense, but that's okay. Um, it's hard to decide whether or not this is a good choice to run with because of the fact that yes, it will help with the user experience in terms of I don't have to repeat my order every time I come into the store. I can just go up and have it ordered for me. But at the same time, then it takes away from being able to interact with your employees who are also going to get firsthand knowledge of what the customer likes and doesn't like. Therefore, they can tell you. I mean, I guess you can do that in the reporting if this machine allows you to report. Um, but those are the kind of things that you want to think about when you're testing the technology and when you're implementing new ways of being able to uh, use the technology in your business. So that's what you want to make sure that you're paying attention to is anytime you open up um, something new, you want to test it out. Think about how is this going to work for your users? How is it going to work for you? You know, like I said, this is great to test out, but does it give a report at the end to you as the business owner, letting you know, you know, so many people don't like pickles. Therefore, you can cut down on how many pickles you order. Um, things like that, you know, that that's what you want to start thinking about when it comes to implementing new technology and how is it going to make your life easier? How is it going to make your customers' lives easier? And how are you going to be able to um, take the information that it, it gives you because now you're not meeting face-to-face -face with your customers. Therefore, you have to figure out a way to implement or um, get that information from them. Right. Like same with when we're doing live broadcasts such as this, we're able to engage with each other even after the broadcast in the comments, which is why I love Facebook, because you're able to still carry on that conversation. And like I always uh, tell you in these uh, broadcasts, you know, the magic happens in the comments because it just takes one one question, one comment, one, um, you know, quote, whatever, to spark the conversation. And then from there, you start connecting with people. You know, you'll start meeting new people, especially when I have guests come onto the show, because they'll bring their audience and I'll bring my audience. And therefore, everyone can mingle almost like a online networking party, right? So that's like the thinking behind it is so that we can all start working together and really understanding um, what's out there and, and who's doing what and how we can work together. So keep that in mind. So that was a fun one from uh, Callie Berger there. Now let's talk about email. Well, we'll talk about email open rates versus messenger open rates. And when I say messenger, I'm referring to Facebook messenger. So <clears throat> when it comes down to um, these open rates and you hear uh, people talking about, you know, email versus Messenger, things like that. You know, there's different open rates. Um, Tammy has a question here uh, or a comment. I think they can offer the user experience in the delivery of the product. Um, yeah, that's that's totally true, Tammy. That definitely can deliver um, that experience, uh, deliver the product, and have that customer experience there as well. And that's the stuff that we want to make sure that we pay attention to um, whenever we implement something new. We want to make sure that we're doing it for the benefit of our customers and not just for ourselves, right? We want to make sure that it, it works for our customers. And the key too is to ask them, follow up with them. You know, if you, um, if you're, let's say we'll talk about Cali Burger again. Let's say you're um, the manager on call manager and you're on the floor and you're observing the customers and how they interact with this. You're showing them how to use it. That's great. Also have that conversation with them. Ask them what they like about it. Ask them what they don't like about it. Find out what's easy for them to do and what's not easy for them to do because that's how you're gonna know what's working and what's not for your customers. You know, that that's an important piece no matter what your business is to constantly ask your customers and observe if you can, um, especially if you have a retail location, observe what they're doing. You know, um, there, I forget what book it, it's in that I was reading about 
but they were talking about how, uh, and you might've heard this story, but they were talking about how um, Procter and Gamble, I believe it was, went through some testing a long time ago and they had hired marketing people and wanted them to go test things out and find out what they can do to expand their market because they just had cleaning products, but they wanted to do more, but they couldn't do more with the cleaning products because they didn't want to damage the floors, um, you know, because they're already strong enough. So they needed to figure out how to get to the next level. Well, long story short, they had one person come up with or watch how users in the household, I should say customers in the household, clean up messes. One person observed somebody who had cleaned up the mess of spilt coffee grounds on the ground with just a wet paper towel. He came back to Procter & Gamble and was like, hey, you need to have a wet paper towel at the end of a stick. That's it. And they laughed and they're like, no, no, I'll go back, like figure it out, see, see what else we got, what we can come up with. And he persisted with that and you showed like, hey, this person, this is with their natural reaction. They dropped something, they cleaned it up with a wet paper towel. That was a natural reaction. And if you add a stick to that, that's going to help clean up messes as in a new mop. As you can probably see where I'm going, it's now Swiffer. And now they have that everywhere. So that's where you want to really start to focus and ask yourself and ask your customers, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Um, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're welcome, Tammy. So all of that is really interesting. And I really want you to think about that because it's what you naturally do. You, your customers, it's that natural uh, engagement that you want. Another example, um, not as big, but another example is uh, I posted, I, we, I think we talked about this the other day too, last week, probably on Friday. Um, but I posted about uh, my personal profile. I posted a question, you know, if you were to hire me for services based off of what you know about me, what would you hire me for? And then people naturally at, answered that question with, you know, overseeing all things tech, video, um, and social media and online courses, like the list went on. And so it was perfect. And the words that they use are the words that I wanted to, that I related to and that I agreed with and that I wanted to start sharing elsewhere, like on my website, because that's what other people are going to relate to when they read it. So that's the important part of asking questions and really listening. Remember, ask and listen to what people are telling you. So that's what you really want to pay attention to. Um, I'm just opening up my be live a little bit more so I can see more comments there. There we go. Um, so that's what you want to think about. Now, when we talk about email open rates, let me bring this up on the screen here. Should be able to uh, see this here. We have different ones. I have this uh, link from MailChimp, which I can put in the comments afterwards so that you can follow up with it. But this is just a, an overview, you know, of the different industries and you'll have um, different open rates for different industries. You know, on average, you're looking at probably about 15 to 20% open rates, which means, you know, somebody opened up that email and then they have click throughs uh, as well. So this is just to give you an idea of the different options that are there. Now, the thing to pay attention to is that these are just averages and it's gonna depend on your email list. Now, it is important to uh, build your email list because that's the only thing that you technically own in terms of the, the people's contact information, right? Because here on Facebook, yes, you may have hundreds of followers, hundreds of likes for your page, but you actually don't control that audience. Facebook does. You um, you basically are renting space for free to be here and Facebook at any time can shut you down and then you can lose your actual um, contacts. So you wanna make sure that you drag them to your website. That way they can fill out an email um, opt-in form, ideally get a freebie, um, something that you're giving away for free. And then um, that way you have connection, a direct contact with them. Now, these open rates will vary, 
And you'll want to check depending on your list as well. And I'll put this in the comments later. But average is about 15 to 20 uh, percent for open rates. Now, if we look at Facebook Messenger, and again, we won't get too far into this, but the you'll probably you probably have heard about Messenger bots and how people are talking about email marketing. Some people are saying email marketing's you know going out the window because it's all about Facebook Messenger and these bots for the chats um, because everyone uh, gets more open rates, right? So in a messenger, if I was to send you a notice via Facebook Messenger, you're gonna open it more. And you can see that here on this article, 80% versus your 15 to 20% average, right? So there is a huge difference, which is why a lot of people are jumping at the, um, at the opportunity to get on with these Facebook Messenger bots. Now, again, this is not something we're gonna cover, but really keep in mind that you have to do your uh, research and your homework um, on Messenger bots and really ask yourself, is this gonna work for you? And look at the uh, rules and the regulations around it. But between email marketing and Facebook Messenger, you can see that if you just look at open rates by themselves, they are huge, um, there's a huge difference. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I want to talk about the user experience. I want to talk about the reason why this changes here. And if you think about it, when email and texting first came out, right, we started with email and then quickly text messaging came out. From there, we didn't really know how to use email. In a way, I mean, we knew how to use it, but we didn't get trained on how to actually um, format our emails. So when email came out, we were like, okay, cool. This is a new way to be able to engage with people and we'll be sending emails. And then right away, texting came out. And then from there, it just took off because it's easier for us to just have a quick chat with somebody. And that's what we like to do. We like to chat, right? So that is why the Facebook Messenger, in my opinion, the bots are so much more, there's so many more open rates on it because we like to text. We like to get rid of those notifications. Those notifications drive us crazy. Email where we're like, whatever, like, you know, your inbox might have a hundred, might have a thousand, mine has zero right now, but um, I try to keep it clean. But everyone's got different options with their email, right? And email's kind of a death death part. We're kind of like, ah, we don't we don't want to deal with um, email. Like, get get rid of it. Just text me. And so that's why, in my opinion, the uh, Facebook Messenger bots are so popular right now because we don't like having that notification pop up. When it comes to texting, we wanna get those notices off as quickly as possible. We don't want to have a number one, two, three, four, 20, whatever sitting there. So we'll go there because it's a text and it's quicker. And so with these Facebook Messenger bots, that's the same idea, although there's a user flow behind it. So you answer a question and then it pops up with something else. So that's the, um, the marketing behind that. And that's where you want to start thinking about your processes and how can you create your user flow? Like, what do you want your customers to do? It's the same idea with email marketing. You're laying out a plan. You have email one, two, three, four, you know, you can create a welcome series and uh, do a little mini course for people um, through email. So it's the same idea. It's just now taking it to a different platform from email to texting. And we're more comfortable with texting versus email as a whole. Um, it, it, you know me for, for business, it's all about email. Like there's no texting for business. We need to drop it in an email because it's easy to search, it's easy to file and to go through um, for reference later. So that's, that's one thing I wanna make sure you point out, to point out is continue to use email, continue to have your subject lines match what's in your email. So let let me let me pause there because I'm really big on training for email. So let me give you some bonus material here. Uh, so when it comes to email, if you uh, thank you guys for tuning in and thanks for uh, 
showing up for the official launch of Ed Talk TV. Uh, definitely keep sharing in the comments and connecting with each other. So let's talk about email for a second because I really wanna make sure that you guys kick off the new year with killer emails. So here's the deal. When it comes to email, even if you hate email, I promise you, if you start doing this, you're going to be at least okay with email. I will kind of say that you might love email eventually, but be at least okay with it. When you write your emails, and you have to train yourself to do this, and you're gonna train your clients to do this. Write your emails to the person it needs to go to, meaning don't CC everyone in the company or all your friends if they don't really need to have that email. When it comes to email, you send it to somebody, only include the actual people that need to be in on the notice, then you write your subject line to the T. It needs to be exactly the same to, hey Jordan, welcome, I'm glad you caught it too. And we're just diving into my uh, tips for email, so I'm glad you guys are popping in. Uh, so when it, comes to the subject line, you need to be very specific. I want that subject line to only tie into whatever you're gonna put in that body of that email, nothing more. I, there's nothing else that needs to go in that body of, the, uh, of an email. Whatever you write in the body needs to match the subject line. Why? Because it makes it easier for people when they're scanning their inbox to go directly to that email and reply directly to that. It's almost, think of it as like a text message since we're talking about this. When you want to send a text, a quick question, you send the quick question and you wait for the response. Same idea with the emails. When you have a topic, you put in the subject line, you write only for that subject line, or you only write what you want to match that subject line. Bullet points are your friend, so make sure to have bullet points. Two to three sentences max uh, for each paragraph if you can, because remember, most people are reading it on their phones. A lot of people have small phones and you want to make sure that it's not these big, huge chunks of text because why people don't like reading huge chunks of text, especially in an email. Again, think about texting and why messenger uh, bots are so uh, popular because they're short and sweet for the most part. Um, and they're easier to respond to. That's the same reason why Facebook comments now are looking like little uh, chat bubbles because it's a comment, it's engaging. They know that we want to connect with each other. They know that we're comfortable with our texting, and so they want us to be comfortable with connecting in the comments, which is why engagement's huge, which is why when you comment here, uh, when you share the broadcast, when you start giving the actual e um, emotions, we'll go with emotions, uh, emoticons, whatever, the hearts and things like that, all of those count higher than a like. That that's like that's what Facebook wants. They want engagement. This is what I've been telling you before today, ever since if you guys have been following me. It's all about the engagement and it's not about the numbers. Don't worry about your likes and your follows. Worry about the engagement. That's key. So with your email, you have the person it needs to go to, you have the subject line, you have the body of the email that matches that subject line. And then if you have more that you want to follow up with, you send another email. Now I know that for a lot of you who maybe hate email or just whatever about email, this might sound crazy, but trust me, I rather get 10 individual emails specific to whatever that topic is than one email or two with 10 different items in it. Because guess what? If I get that, chances are it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna be able to answer what you needed. Or if I am, it's gonna take me twice as long, and that's not gonna be good, right? Especially if you're waiting for something. There's too many things that can be missed in that email. So that's why short, sweet, and specific emails are the best because they are quick for people then to answer and to file away and to find later if needed. So that's a big one. Here's an extra one. If you want um, in your subject line, make sure to have some key information. Your website, um, I have my website in there. You can put your uh, tagline, whatever, uh, your office hours, hint, hint, because you need office hours. We're talking about 2018. We're setting you up. 
you're getting a lot more than I thought I was going to be talking about today. Just FYI. Um, and stay tuned until the end because we'll talk about who's coming on tomorrow to the show. Um, but that's what you want to make sure that you do is you really start setting yourself up now for a good year with business, for a good year with your email and really getting comfortable with yourself and your clients. And you're going to have to train people too because it's not just you that needs to be trained. You're going to have to redirect the conversation. People are still going to, if you have had this set up before, people are still going to email or text you or Facebook message you. It's up to you though to redirect the conversation. S respond and say, awesome, please send me an email here so that I can follow up. Or that's great, I'm gonna go ahead and send you an email and we'll carry the conversation over there. Like whatever you need to do, get it over to your email because that's where the magic is gonna be for keeping everything straight for you. So anyway, that was a big one, right? So we were talking about email open rates and why they're so low compared to Facebook Messenger bots, which is got, what got us over to the actual bonus information about marketing or building your email correctly and getting it out there. So it really comes down to that comfort level and how we really enjoy texting over email. We kind of just skipped email when it first came out and that's why there's not a lot of training on it and it's just like, okay, cool, let's just go text because it's easier. It's more comfortable, it's it's shorter for the most part. Um, things are starting to get longer, but still, you wanna make sure that you're taking that information and observing it, paying attention to how people are using it and how you can implement that into your marketing strategies. And so really make sure that you pay attention to what your users are doing. Uh, if, if you're just starting out and you don't have any customers, any potential clients, anybody using your website, then you still can observe these. Um, you can still observe people doing things by just going into a Facebook group, by just looking at somebody's Facebook page. Look at the page here afterwards. Go to my website. Look there. See how things are laid out. Not saying that my stuff is perfect, but I do think through the process and I change things up to make sure that it's easy for you as a user to find things and to look for things. That's what, um, with these Facebook Lives, I decided it would be best to do a talk show because I can talk about whatever. You guys can jump in and engage with each other even after the um, broadcast. You can see here that there's a bunch of comments. There's people that are sharing this. And we're going to be bringing on guests starting tomorrow, which is awesome. So it, it's one of those things for me. That's what is a great way to connect with people because that's what I do. I connect people with the tools and the resources they need. And I want to be able to share that information. That's why my page, believe it or not, is so popular. And it stands out when people come to it for the first time because of the fact that there's actually engagement going on. They see that there's content here that's valuable. They, you know, just seeing the video up top uh, for the um, Facebook page blows people away. They're like, oh, that's a good video. I've thought about taking that video down a couple times and redoing it, but people like that video. So I'm going to keep it up for a while. We'll go from there, you know, and see what happens. So it's just always paying attention to what people are saying. And you're on Facebook, so you have plenty of people to pay attention to. Um, that's also dangerous, right? Because then you spend too much time. So pick a few people to follow. Pick a few people that really you can observe and pull information from and be able to see like, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Um, what are their uh, engagements like? Don't worry about how many likes their page has, how many followers they have. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Worry about how many people are engaging. What are they saying in the comments? That's where I want you to focus your energy. So that being said, let's talk about tomorrow's um, guest. So tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and flip my screen here. Tomorrow, we are actually going to have Carrie Rigo over here as a guest who is going to be talking about realistic social media management. I'm super excited for this. Uh, Carrie's actually a, a local for me. And so she's going to help kick off the show tomorrow. And we're going to talk about social media management. Now, the page I'm on right now is my Facebook page where you're seeing me now. 
but I clicked over on events. And you can see the upcoming events here. And what's cool about it is you can actually go there and comment on these events. If you have questions for us to prepare for the show, you can actually click on here. Obviously you can attend, you can say you're gonna be attending. So you get notices for it. Um, you can find out a little bit more about the guest. Uh, I try to tag them as much as possible here. And you can ask questions by popping in the uh, comments here. So really start thinking about that. And if you are wanting to be a guest, then I want you to um, head over to checkwithed.com after this and click on the Facebook Live menu item. And that will allow you to request to be a guest on the show. So then you can share your knowledge with everyone here as well. And think about the topics that you would want to cover. Like really think about what is it that you know that you want to share? Because again, remember, it's not about how many people you are uh, are following you. It's We're not talking about, oh, I'm only bringing on, you know, high profile uh, influencers. No, I'm bringing on everyone like this this is a talk show i want to bring on everyone uh, as much as possible and um you know it's not straight promo for you know your business but it's you sharing your knowledge it's you selling without selling right so that's the whole point here um so keep that in mind head over there after this uh feel free to keep sharing and keep commenting even if you're watching the replay and um yeah any feedback you have let me know I'm going to go ahead and switch this over towards the end, and then I'll connect with you guys in the comments and drop those links that I mentioned from um, the uh, email marketing and the messenger bots. So here we go.